morning, Three Life, and happy Sunday. We are so glad you're here to worship with us this morning, whether it's on our Facebook Live or our YouTube page. We are just so excited to get to worship with you. Our team has prepared an awesome set, so grab your crew and get ready to worship. darkness run for treat this Sunday. I think we're here week 11 with Church at Home and we're so thankful that wherever you are, you are coming in to have church with us 
your living room, your bedroom with your family. Grab your friends, share it somewhere today. And I wanna give you the opportunity right now, we've been doing this for some time now over the past few weeks, and we have for you a digital online connect card. If you say, hey, this is my first time tuning in, this is my first time watching, or maybe you've made a decision to follow Jesus over this past 11 weeks. Maybe it's time for you to take that next step in baptism and you wanna know more. Maybe it's time for you to connect more with Three Life. We want to know you. We wanna find out what God is doing in your life. So go to Three Life Church right from your phone, threelifechurch.com and go scroll down on the home page. There is a connect card. You can fill that connect card out. We wanna hear from you. We wanna know who you are. We wanna call you. You can click on it, put your name, your information, and let us know what God is doing in your life. Also, right now is the time, and here at the end of the experience, for you to be able to give online today. You can go to threelifechurch.com right on your phone. Scroll down, you can give online, watch the just prompts, the steps, follow the steps. You can also send a check or you can text to give. You can text the amount to 84321 right from your phone today to give online. We're so thankful for your generosity. We love you, church. We miss you. We can't wait to get back together in community with you. But until then, let's get on our feet, let's sing together, let's worship together today, right where you are.
every single week. I'm so thankful for our worship team. I'm so thankful for all the time that you put into the songs uh, and, and just the messages that come from that. I can only imagine that you're in your living room and you're getting ready to worship. What I want you to do is just settle down. Uh, I hope you got your breakfast ready. I hope that uh, if you need to go get some coffee, go ahead and get that. I need you to go to Nahum chapter one, okay? And uh, we're gonna be reading a couple of verses, okay? I'm focusing on verse number seven, okay? So as you get ready, as you get ready to um, just hear from God's word, I want you to just go ahead and prepare your heart, prepare your living room, or it, maybe, you're, maybe you're still in bed, wherever you're out at, just go ahead and get ready as we worship together. Okay, so watch this. We're gonna open up the word, but I need you to understand this, okay? This is uh, Nahum, okay? He's heard from God. He's given uh, a prophetic message. Now, what has happened is this. A hundred years earlier, okay, there was a great revival because of this man named Jonah. God said, hey, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to tell them that judgment is coming. They got 40 days to turn it around. Well, they turned it around. They turned back to God. And, um, and I'm talking about a revival hit the town, okay? Well, a hundred years later, there's a ton of wick wickedness. And let's read, let's read what takes place, okay? I want, you to, I want you to see what's going on and watch what God says, okay? This is verse number two. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. Watch this. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and he will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. I want you to see how big God is. We know about his love, but also I need you to know about his wrath. God is also just. So when you see things that are crazy in this world, don't think that God doesn't see it as well. Watch this. He rebukes the sea. He makes it dry. He dries up all the rivers. Uh, Bashan and, and, and Carmel wither, and the flower of Lebanon wilts. The mountains quake before him. The hills melt, and the earth heaves at his presence. Yes, the world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can endure the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. Listening to this, I already have chills. It's like, oh my goodness. But watch this in verse number seven. In the middle of all of his wrath and his fury, this is what he says to the ones that, to the believers. He says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. They had reverted back to their sinful ways to their wickedness. I'm talking about wickedness was running wild. Rebellion was running free. I'm talking about times were dark, really dark. And Nahum is coming back on the scene and saying, judgment is coming. God is, it, it's coming. It's here. And, and, and he's, and he's prophetically speaking, this things, things are out of control. And I believe that we're in those times. I believe that we're in those moments right now. And we're seeing things that are just absolutely out of control. But this is a exactly what the devil does. When something's terrible, when something's bad, when something bad happens, Satan whispers in our head, what good can come out of this? What the devil has always done. If God is good, then why would he ever allow something like this? Why would times ever, how would he ever allow this kind of thing to happen? And the devil uses painful times to try and get us to doubt and disbelieve the goodness of God. But I came here today, I'm not here to give all the answers because I don't have them. But what I do want to do is very clearly push you back to understand this. God doesn't prom promise a problem free life. God does not promise a problem free life. It's not going to be Miracle Monday and Trouble Free Tuesday, Walk on Water Wednesday. No, he doesn't prom promise a trouble free life. He doesn't uh, uh, promise a life with no problems. But what he does say is this, I'm going to go through it with you. He says this, his promise is I will be with you in every circumstance. I won't leave you alone. In it. I will walk with you. I will guide. I will be your strength. I will be your help. He says, I'm not going to remove the trial, but I'll take you around it. Now he said, I'm not going to take you around it. I'm not going to remove it from you, but I will walk through it with you. There was a song uh, back in the day I used to sing, and uh, this was 
uh, we grew up in church and it was hymns and, and, uh, and Southern gospel and we called it praise and worship, okay? And um, so I still got those old school roots, right? But we would sing this song and it would go like this. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He said he never offered our victories without our fighting, but he said help would always come in time. And then it would just, oh, it would stir up and it would be like, just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says, give in. He says, just hold on. My God will take you through the fire again. He'll take you through it. Sometimes he doesn't take you around it. I mean, it's hard. My son got a shot the other week and uh, man, it's hard when, when, when you're watching your kids get a shot, man, you know it's gonna hurt and I wanna take that pain from them, but he had stepped on this rusty nail and I knew he had to get a tetanus shot. He's 10 years old, it had been, uh, uh, he's past due on, on getting his shot and man, I wanted to take that pain from him, but I couldn't. What I could do is I was in the room with him and I never left him and I comforted him. And, and, and he was, you know, just like all of us, who, who looks forward to getting a shot? But he was brave. And, and, and I kept just, re, I, I was reaffirming him the whole time. And as soon as he got the shot, he was like, man, that's not as bad as I thought it was. And we were driving down the road and he goes, man, why, why, how come it, it hurts you um, uh, to help you sometimes, dad? It, like, like, why does it have to hurt you? And, and I was like, it's exactly how, how um, God allows some hurts in our life to heal us. He'll allow pain in our life to, to reveal some of his uh, uh, promises and his and it strengthens our faith and it pushes us into him to trust him with all of our heart. And this is exactly what I want you to see. The pain for the moment has to be met when the eternal promise. I have to lean into God when it doesn't make sense. When I, can, when I don't have all the answers, when I wish I could take the pain away. I know some of you are going through some stuff right now that I wish I I could take it from you, but I can't. And it's hard to watch those that you love hurt. When you hurt, I hurt. When you cry, I cry. It's exactly what the church is supposed to look like. It hurts to watch those that are hurt. But Paul said it like this. Paul was beaten. He was stoned. He was in prison. Finally, he was beheaded. He was shipwrecked. But he says this. He said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He goes on in the end of that chapter to say this. He said, for we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. He said, it's going to work good. It's, it'll work together, but it's good and bad work together for the glory of God. Happy and sad, fear and faith, ups and downs. It, it works together. It was, uh, it was a week ago that uh, I was being a good dad and I was making brownies with my daughter. And, uh, and, and I mean, we did all the mix and she had her friend over. I mean, we're just, we're, we're just having a good time, you know, uh, where, where you, you end up mixing it all together and they, they, they lick the little mixers and, and, uh, I mean, it's just a good time. Right. Um, and I kept watching the brownies in the oven and they just kept on rising. And they kept on rising. And they, I'm like, man, those are the thickest brownies I've ever seen in my lifetime. What in the world is going on? And uh, I ended up going to look at the box. And the box was, um, uh, it wasn't brownies, it was cake. <laughs> the Both of the boxes looked the same. The brownies and the cake looked the same. And I was like, oh my gosh, how do I explain this to my kids? I'm like, girl, these are cake brownies. These are the best brownies you've ever had in your life. But sometimes you got to slow down and pay attention to the instructions. Don't freak out. Stay focused. When I get out of the Word, when I get out of the Bible, I start to freak out. I focus on the wrong things. I get my focus. Focus on everything's, everything's going to hell. Everything's going to be horrible. No, what you focus on gets bigger. When you focus on your trouble and your pain and your problems, they get bigger. But when you focus on God, he gets bigger. He said, he said, look, I love you. And he said, I, he said, nobody's going to be acquitted. The wicked will never be acquitted. God said, I will fight your battle, but you got to slow down and don't freak out. Say, Hey, I'm going to focus on God's word. I'm going to lean into his instructions and his instructions for the church is simply this. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And it says he will direct your path in the middle of the mess, in the middle of it not making sense. Never forget, don't let the devil 
convince you that the Lord is not good. I'll, that's That'll be the biggest fight. The Lord is good. Watch this, watch this. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. A stronghold means a refuge. It's, a, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a rock. It's like going into a house that's protected. He said that, that he knoweth. He sees those who run in and trust him. He, that, that word trust means flee for protection, to have hope, make refuge and trust. He said, hey, I'm a stronghold and I know I see the ones who run to me and I see the ones who are running from me. It's he said I, it, that protection comes to those that go and say, hey, God, I need you in this season of my life. I need your love. When I'm in the house, my kids feel safe. Why? Because somebody's got to come through me to get to them. God is in the house of your life. And when you choose to trust him, God's goodness draws you into his presence. And where his presence is, there is peace. So I know we've been going through some things. And, um, and if you found yourself away from his presence, he just simply says it like this. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For those of you that are struggling, that are hurting, that are in pain right now, I want you to remember this, okay? And it feels like the wicked are winning. I want you to remember this. Let me read this scripture over to you one more time, okay? God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger. Thank God for that. And great in power. Thank God for that. And will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. God gives every single one of us a chance of mercy, a chance to come to him. He gives us all grace. The wages of sin is death. We deserve to go to hell, but the gift of God is eternal life in his presence. There's fullness of joy. The wicked run from him. Those that humble themselves say, hey, look, I see the brokenness of this world. I see the brokenness of myself. I see the evil inside of me. Forget everybody else. God, I need you. You'll either stand in your righteousness or you'll stand in Jesus's righteousness. But Jesus came to this broken earth to bring healing. He died, shed his blood. He was the ultimate sacrifice for our sin that separated us from a holy God. And because we believe in him, there's no condemnation. <laughs> That God says, hey, you're accepted in the beloved. Don't run from me. Run to me. I know things are hard and they don't make sense. But in this moment, the greatest thing that we can do, the greatest thing that you can do is say, okay, doesn't make sense. But I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm going to obey him and do my best to please him. And I'm going to draw close to God because he first drew close to me. Let me pray for you. Lord, we love you. And I'm grateful for every person that's watching this right now. God, you know every single soul. God, you know what's going on. You know what you're doing in their spirit. Lord, you know what you're trying to uh, bring about in their life. So Lord, I pray that you would become alive and, and your goodness would draw them to repentance. I pray every single one of us would learn to just lean in on you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and a. Man. Hey church, well that's a wrap. Before we go any further today, we just want to say again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks Pastor Josh for that awesome challenge this morning. We're glad you were watching. We know that this week has been a challenging, just such a heavy week for so many. Um, our brother in Christ, um, George Floyd, their family that we are praying for, that we see and that we hurt and mourn with this week and we just want to take just a minute just to speak to it and just to let you, you know, know how we can help well as a church family i mean as a as a big church right and then and uh, the influence that god has given us we're a code of many colors we yes. have uh all and, and all we prayed for this we wanted to be a church that that i mean it, it looked like heaven when you come into the room and so i know there are brothers and sisters right now that are hurting and when i watched the video this week i'm talking about of a of a guy that is begging for breath and and at one point crying out for his mom 
and given no mercy as I watched this take place, the anger and the frustration and the just sadness. I can't, like what went over my heart and, and, and over my spirit as, as a church family. I just wanted us to know, I want you to just think about this. And, and, it, and, and so I just, I thought about this, but, and, and I, want you, I want to say this, okay? But just because it doesn't affect you personally doesn't mean it's not a problem. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of somebody. What if it's your brother? What if it's your dad? What if, it, what if it's your best friend, your son going through something like that? And scripture says if one person hurts, then we all hurt. Yeah. And as an image bearer of Christ, we're made in his image. You know that God has called us to love our neighbor as ourselves. But I also hurt with my neighbor today. So I want to pray this prayer over our church and believe 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 which reads like this this is a powerful promise from God okay it says this if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and 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 pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land and that's what we are believing for we we see you um, we hurt with you, church family, um, and, and, and those abroad. And I want to pray that God will use the church as we literally get on our face and beg him for a spiritual revival, that God would heal the hearts of the racists. He would heal the heart of hatred. He would heal the heart of that spirit that is diseased by sin, and that we would see a revival come in the weeks and years to come and just do our simple part, right? So as we pray together, just know as a couple that we love you yes. and as a church family we're praying together and uh, let's do our part to eradicate this type yes. of, uh, of sin and yes. hatred. Use your voice and um, spread love and however you feel there's a lot of angry angry people and so be it. And I understand. And we understand but let's rally together we believe that change is here and our best days, they are they are ahead. Yeah. So let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you for the promise of your word. God, I thank you, Jesus, that you have loved us so well. And I pray, God, that you would heal the hearts of those that are hurting right now, those that are angry, looking for answers and have so many questions. God, we pray for justice. And I pray, God, that you would just show that you are, uh, Lord, that, you, that your power is mighty. I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. God, I pray, Lord, that you would bring us together through something so tragic, God, that what the devil meant for evil, yes. God, that you would turn it around and we would in our time see good. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you meet us right here in, um, in, in our questions, but you meet us right in our fears. You meet us right in the problem. And God, you'll, you'll bring a solution. So Jesus, we love you, and I thank you. And we believe that, again, as we just step into your plan for our life, God, that we will see healing come across this nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Church, we love you so we much. We love you, church. Have a great week.